So this is Brian. This is my first geeky YouTube video, and I'm going to demonstrate the capabilities of the Pack-On F135 Plus. And I have it hooked up through my MacBook Air. The Pack-On software only runs in Windows XP. So I have VMware Fusion with a copy of Windows XP that I run it in. And here's the interface for the Pack-On software. It's saying it's idle right now. So let's start a new role. Scan settings, I want a color negative. 16 base, which is the highest resolution. Uh, it's 2000 by 3000 resolution. And we want to do a single strip, which is the whole roll. And right here you can punch in whatever number you like. I just leave it at zero. Dust and scratch removal, yes, we want that. If you're doing true black and white, you don't want that. We'll hit OK. And it's preparing to scan. Just takes a few minutes to warm up. And here's what it's doing. It's blinking. Green means go. And you can barely hear it, but the wheels are turning. It's ready to scan. So here's my roll. See if I can video and see what I'm doing at the same time. So you want the DX code to be facing up. There's the DX code. And we insert like this. And one of the things I love about the scanner versus one of the many things I love versus a uh, flatbed is that your film doesn't have to be flat. This thing has taken pretty much anything I've stuck in there as long as I can get it through there. So there it is, sucking it in. And spin it out. Basically, here's the strip. I used to hold it the whole time to make sure it feeds well and doesn't pick up dust and stuff on the ground. <clears throat> but I'm not, I've gotten kind of lazy. I just let it hang. I'll let Digital Ice take care of the rest. Here it comes. So I didn't, I meant to start a stopwatch to see how long it takes. Um, and I'll figure it out later, but it doesn't take too long to scan a whole roll. And this is 36 frames. I believe it's Portra 400 VC that I shot last weekend in DC. And scanning. So while it's scanning, one thing I really love about running it on my Mac is while it's scanning I can switch over to Lightroom. So I do all my editing on my Mac so I can be editing while it's scanning, which is pretty cool. I can just flip back and forth. And it continues to do its thing in the background. So I'll show you the interface a little bit can't do a whole lot while it's scanning, but it's a little bit basic. Um, this is the magic button. 
when you hit this, it switches to your color correction buttons, brightness and contrast, rotation, and I'll show you that in a minute. See how it's doing over here. And this phone does not do well with low light. This is an HTC One, and usually it's pretty good in low light, but sometimes it gets this weird... I don't even know what you call that. It's weird, though. It's like a flare. Anyway, looks like we're doing pretty good here. And this sometimes will curl up in here. Depends on how flat the film is. Back to here. And while we're waiting, I'll gratuitously show you some of my cameras. These are all for sale, according to my wife, if you're interested. We have Contax G1 with the 21 millimeter. We have a Contax, I think it's a 2A, so old school. It's one of the newer 2As, I think it's a post-war. Uh, it's a great condition. Works great, tried it out. We have Mamiya 1.9, still trying to sell that one. Um, Canon 5D, I might sell that one. I don't shoot digital much anymore. And we got Yashica Mat, which has a funky uh, shutter. All right, it's done. And the yellow blinky light just means you need to pull it through. There we go. And we have images. This is a good thing. So as you can kind of see, it does a pretty good job from the get-go. This is how you rotate up here. So that's pretty good. I probably wouldn't even touch it. Because I'll export as a TIFF and then do my further editing in Lightroom. So it's not the quickest program in the world. There's a little bit of a lag <clears throat> when you're flipping through pictures and making your edits. Um, I'm trying to find one that's a little off so I can do some color correction, but these all look pretty darn good to me. I'll just I'll just mess with one just because just to demonstrate. So that's just amazing. If I would have scanned this roll with the V500 it would have taken at least an hour and I still wouldn't have gotten the, this good a color. All right, so here's where you do your balancing, color balancing. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Yellow, blue, green, magenta. But I liked it how it was. So here's where you can see the changes you've made to each color. So I went negative two on the red, so I'm just gonna go back to. Oh no, wrong way. There. No. Nope. Ah. Okay. So that's what we started with, which is perfectly fine to me. All right, so I'm pretty happy with these. I'm gonna go ahead and export. 
So what I do is just click on the first one and then just shift click to select them all. And then we just go up here to the little disc, the floppy disk icon. Which is a little outdated. Alright, let's see, location of pictures, so we can change this. And for some reason I have to change it every time. Sometimes it remembers where I put it last time and sometimes it doesn't. It's a little finicky. So I have a directory called scans. Appropriate enough. And what you can do here is you can um, use the original file name if available. I guess that's if you... I think you can pull in f files to edit in here. I don't know why you do that. Uh, but you can name your files with a prefix. Uh, sometimes I'll do that just to give it a unique file name. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, save as raw. What that'll do is it'll save it as a positive um, before it makes any kind of um, adjustments or, or uses digital ice. Um, so you can, uh, if you if you like to work with raw files, that's how you do it. It basically gives you the same um, data, like it gives you a TIFF, same resolution, same um, color space, and everything. Uh, but it's just a positive image without raw without uh, digitalize. So I leave that unchecked and selected pictures only. Yes. So what I've done here is uh, in VMware you can share folders with your Mac your Mac desktop. So I've got a shared folder um, that I scan everything to. And once I do that, and there it is exporting, there's the progress bar. Once it exports, I can just flip right over to Lightroom. We'll wait till it's done. And here's my dog. It's about halfway. You know, I'm getting impatient. Import. There it is, scans. All right, so there's all my scans. We'll do import. Of course, they're not all here yet because they haven't all exported yet. And we'll switch over to the develop module. Rotate. Rotate. So these look pretty good. I am very happy. And I can continue to be happy with this machine. I bought another one just in case something happens to this one. It's good to have a backup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this one. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do anything to it. I don't need to export it. Because what I want to do is post one of these TIFFs in the PacOn group so that you guys can play around with it. I'm going to zoom in and show you how sharp this is. It's a great lens too. This is um, the 50mm 1.4 for the Olympus ON system. It's one of my favorite lenses. It has a great, great rendering to it. Uh, here's another one from that lens. Anyway, you can see why I like this thing. It's fast, really good quality, sharp. The software is not the best, but it's it's better than a lot of software I've seen for these old scanners. And that's it. I highly recommend.